Today's episode of the podcast is brought to you by Eccentric, the makers of the K-Box and the new K-Pulley. Guys, flywheel training's really grown in popularity of late, and although it's something that's been around for a while, the simple reason that it's grown in popularity is because it works. We've been lucky to have a K-Box in our weight room for the past three years, and we've seen some really great things when it comes to improving the athlete's ability to change direction, and then looking at our return to play protocols with different lower body injuries with the student athletes. The love-hate relationship that everyone has with the K-Box is now just going to grow more with the addition of the K-Pulley. The ability to do standing presses, pulls, rip-throughs, and knee drive exercises is just going to be another arsenal to our training and another addition to the love-hate relationship that our student-athletes have with the awesome tools that come from Eccentric. Go ahead and hop over to Eccentric.com today to check out what they have. Guys, I can't recommend it enough and I guarantee you won't be disappointed not just with the products, but with the awesome customer service that Eccentric provides. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. Today, guys, I have an absolutely killer talk. We are joined by Momentous founder and CEO, Matt Wan, to discuss the ins and outs of the performance nutrition world. Matt's going to start out discussing right, right away, guys, what drew him in uh, to performance nutrition and why he feels this is a, a marketplace that really requires some special attention because of the holes that he sees that he's hoping to fill in with his company. Uh, then we're going to dive down the rabbit hole of, you know, why they chose the products that they started with, and then what he feels are the most important aspects of these products to him, and then give some guidelines for us as coaches and consumers as to how we can make better choices as to what we're providing for the athletes we get to work with. This is really an awesome talk, guys. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Let's get right to it. Matt, thank you so much for spending the time with us today. Hey, Jay. How you doing? Thanks so much for having me on. Doing awesome, man. I, I'm stoked for this. So let's, uh, let's just start out here real quick. Let's tell everybody who you are, where you're at, and you know what you got going on out there. So my name's Matt Wan. I'm the founder and CEO of Momentus. It's a performance nutrition startup uh, out of Jackson Hole, Wyoming, which is where I'm calling you from today. And with respect to my own background, frankly, I, I think I can talk about whatever you want. But uh, I think the uh, the most interesting thing to talk about would, would you know, be how, how we're addressing this category. Yes, 1000%. So, Matt, let's get right to it. Like, this is an interesting subculture in both performance training and nutrition, mm-hmm. the idea of performance nutrition. So let's talk about why momentous what are you guys looking to do and and why is this something that you became so passionate about that you're running a company out in out in wyoming (laughs) well i think frankly we would uh we would have run the company wherever we were so the wyoming part's just a personal choice but it's it's really like i think any consumer product should be frankly and that it's personal experience driven so i was an athlete not nearly as serious as some of the individuals that I'm sure you deal with these days and that a lot of the, your, your audience in particular serves, but essentially I was just a nerd. I was a training nerd. So I was looking for any and every advantage I could get in my training. That, that didn't just mean supplements, right? That was every aspect of performance nutrition. That was foam rolling, ice baths, compression socks. That was literally any advantage I could find any way to optimize what I was putting in and therefore what I was getting out. And it really started for me from, from quite a young age, actually, when I was in middle school, uh, I, I want to say sixth or seventh grade when I had the opportunity to cross paths with a guy named Dave Schultz and Dave at the time was the assistant strength coach at the 49ers. And Dave was sort of the junior guy on the team and was, uh, basically just generous enough to take me under his wing. I think maybe took the, uh, took the assignment or took the role with me a little bit too seriously. And so I've got this really specific memory of, of walking out of the Niners locker room. And like I said, the seventh grade with binders of information, binders of information, right? Not just on like training itself, but even, even just the basics, right? Like literally like what is a carbohydrate? What is a protein? This was starting from scratch for me because growing up, like I was the kid that 
ate pizza, hot dogs, and chicken fingers for every meal. Like I didn't have any, I didn't have any knowledge at this time. I didn't have any knowledge. I didn't have any interest in it. I just wanted to be a great athlete. And Dave had to convince me basically that nutrition was going to be an integral part of what we were doing in this program. And like I said, it was just sort of part of it. It was just part of it, right? I mean, every move or almost every move I know in the weight room at this point, Dave taught me and taught me from a very young age. So uh, that was sort of my upbringing in the space. And as I got older, I, I just started trying products, right? Trying products, seeing how I could optimize my inputs, whether that was creatine, glutamine, protein powder, omega-3s, vitamin D, whatever it is, right? Like I said, I was looking for every and any advantage I could find. And what, what really struck me about the space was that essentially the brands that guys like Dave or, you know, his peers of the team were recommending were not the brands that I was seeing at the GNC. They were not the brands that I was seeing at a vitamin shop. They were certainly not the brands that I was seeing on the sidelines, right? These were really, really high quality, you know, generally pharmaceutical type looking products that just tasted like crap, but, you know, were the grass fed NSF ultra clean, ultra pure products, right? Which was fine because I was, I was taking them because these guys told me to, right? I wasn't taking them because I thought they tasted good. But, but, but the sort of the crux of the observation there was that hey, these are clearly the good products, right? These are clearly the ones that the, the experts are endorsing, but they're not the same as the ones that if, if I had any other experience, I probably would have been taking. They weren't the ones that my friends were taking. They weren't the ones that my, uh, p my peers were taking, my teammates, even my brother. That's not what he was taking either. They were all coming home with some product from GNC because that's what they'd seen advertised. That's what they'd seen, you know, some guy on Instagram using that's what they'd seen even their favorite athletes endorsing and like i said it was it was sort of a culmination of observations to say that the products that professional athletes were endorsing were not the same as the products that they were actually using it's like you understand when lebron drives you know a kia or whatever it is in some commercial at halftime that that's not what he's actually driving day to day, right? Yeah, a thousand percent. I don't think LeBron James would be rolling around in a Kia right now. <laughs> right, and and you understand when he endorses like a Sprite product that that's probably not what he's drinking every day either. But for some reason, this belief persists that, hey, because I see Gatorade on the sidelines all the time, that must be what all the professional athletes are using. And that's just not the case. And you know that. But the vast majority of consumers do not. That struck me as a real opportunity. So if it, in as simple a terms as I can put it, I started Momentus because I was sick of hearing the words, all protein powder is the same. And frankly, you can, you can insert any category into that sentence. All sports drinks are the same. All vitamins are the same. Whatever it is. That's just not true. And that's not how we treat any other category in health and fitness. It's certainly not how we treat anything else we put in our bodies. You know, as health conscious consumers, forget elite athletes, right? Just as somebody that cares about our health, we understand that at least to some extent, you get what you pay for, right? Sometimes we pay up for organic produce. Sometimes it's grass fed meats. Sometimes it's you know, grass fed butter, pasture raised eggs, whatever it is. But with supplements, this belief persists that all products are basically the same and you should just shop for the best deal. That's why when you go to a GNC, all the products look similar. They're all priced super similar and all the formulas are pretty much the same. Yeah. And all the results that you get from them are probably about the same as well. <laughs> yeah, because the products are just the same, right? And Basically, as a result of this this mindset, right, the performance nutrition category really continues to be dominated by what I believe are longstanding, low quality market leaders that, in my opinion, don't deserve to be here. Just to give you one statistic, according to the Clean Label Project, which is sort of third party consumer safety group, they essentially do the same testing that uh, you'd, you'd be familiar with NSF, right? They basically do the same testing that NSF does. And they make it public. So 
they get a cease and desist letter like every week. Anyways, they released a big study in 2018 that called out a bunch of brands. And specifically what they said was that 70%, 70% of the top 100 protein brands on Amazon.com tested positive for lead. Well, and I, I, lead. Lead. So, I mean, wrong, <laughs> wrong mineral, right? I thought it was supposed to help with our iron, like when we're in the weight room, but they're giving us lead. It's, it's insanity, right? You're taking this quote supplement, right? Not because you need it to live. You're taking because you think it's going to make you perform better. And because you're cutting corners and you're treating it again, like this commodity that again, all of it's the same. Uh, you end up with a product that can, in some cases actually be counterproductive. Or could kill you, basically. Oh yeah, there've been there've been. Um, I mean, I don't I don't want to go that far necessarily, but certainly if um, you look into the research around lead consumption, the uh, the data is unequivocal. It is definitely not healthy. Yeah. So now let's keep moving forward, because now you guys are rolling, you guys are building, and you guys have a few things set up. So. Let's let's take a step back when Matt was first setting his direction. Why did you choose the first, second, and third products that you have? Why do you feel those are most important? And why did you start there as a bang for your buck idea when it comes to helping young athletes with some possibly missing areas in their nutrition? It's, it's sort of the gorilla of the market, right? We started with three grass-fed whey protein powders, all NSF certified, and then pretty shortly after that, we released a plant-based alternative as well. And that wasn't because we felt that the problems in the performance nutrition category are unique to protein powder. It's because, like I said, that is the 800-pound gorilla of the market. That is the second largest category behind only sports drinks, meaning Gatorade and Powerade, et cetera. So it's a huge, huge market, and it's a huge market not because every man, woman in America buys one tub a year. It's because the people who do consume it, like you and me, consume it religiously. So when there is a, a chance that those products are contaminated, the impact on those consumers is huge. And, and, and I felt it was... It was a place where we could make the most immediate impact, if you will. And that, hey, there's there's plenty of other things you can drink other than, you know, Gatorade sports drinks, right? But when I looked at the protein category specifically, there were very few options that really stacked up for me in terms of, like I said, primarily quality, certifications, meaning third-party testing, and then taste. And there's a difference between quality and certifications as well, which irrespective of the protein uh, powder category is, is, is important for people to understand. And that to say that something is NSF certified does not mean it's a high quality product. It means it's a safe product. It means that they've tested it to be accurate to what's said on the label. They've tested it to be free of, uh, you know, a ton of different contaminants, right? Heavy metals, lead, cadmium, arsenic, BPA, mycotoxins, et cetera. And they've tested it to be free of banned substances. But you can get Coca-Cola MSF certified. It doesn't mean it's healthy for you, right? It just means that like what we see is on the bottle is actually what's in the bottle. So NSF certification is different from high quality. You need you need to you need to check both of those boxes, right? So like when I'm not using a momentous product, when I need to buy a supplement in a different category. I'm probably buying it from somebody like a Designs for Health. I think they make a lot of great products, but um, they make great products in a lot of categories that we don't, and they don't have any NSF certification. So like if I was a professional athlete, which I'm not, I probably couldn't take those, even though they're, even though they're super high quality products, right? Super, super high quality products. And the other thing about some of those brands, like I said, that are really high quality is what I'd articulated before and that <laughs> they don't always taste that good. You know, they were, they were designed, like I said, with quality in mind more than they were really a consumer. 
And, and as a result of that, it, it can be pretty difficult to follow up with compliance with, with the athlete in that respect. And that we can sort of prescribe the right medicine for you, but if you're not excited to take it every day, what difference does it make? So taste is a really big one for us on that point as well. And and something that frankly we spent like, I mean, we spent like a solid six months prototyping the first flavors. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the famous saying is a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down, right? Yeah, I think that's pretty much right. Um, that's not what we use, but the sentiment is correct in that, you know, the reason you should buy a product from us or the reason you should buy a great quality product in any category is not because of the taste, right? That should not be your primary decision. But if the product tastes great, you're probably a lot more likely to use it consistently and therefore see results. Just like if you hate your training or your client hates their training program, just because it's really good for their body doesn't mean it's going to end up being effective because they're probably going to try and cut corners every time, every time they can. Uh, yeah. And I think too, though, speaking of, you know, the liking and cutting corners, I think that one thing too, that I really like when it comes to talking with you and Chris is just, and, and the website itself is the level of transparency that you guys have when it comes to what you're doing. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't pretend to be the expert here, but the short of it is that, you know, we try to choose sources for a reason. So when we were going through this process and we were working with experts like Dave, who I mentioned before, like Jordan Mazur from the 49ers, like Brandon McDaniel from the Dodgers, like Tim Karen from Allegiant Gym, these types of guys, um, they, they weren't just saying, hey, you should have a whey protein instead of a soy protein or even... You should have a whey isolate instead of a whey concentrate because for some people that's still a measure of premium. They were saying, hey, you need to have a grass-fed, cold-processed, hormone and antibiotic-free whey isolate. And while you're at it, we prefer the dairy farming practices in certain countries to others. I mean, they were that specific, right? So when you get down to the level, there, there, aren't, there aren't actually that many options when it comes to sources. So it's 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 really a result of that sourcing process that we're able to talk about the product with that much transparency right because like i said they really were chosen for a reason yeah and i think then kind of full circling back to your last answer that transparency along with the certifications is something that if it isn't as important to coaches as it should be it needs to be more important because you know, you you read, what, once a month that somebody pisses hot because they took some supplement. <clears throat> now, we can talk about whether that's really the reason or not another day. But you need to make sure, like, you wouldn't go and get C-level stakes to feed your team. So you need to make sure if you're really honing in and, and trying to find what's best, that the people that are providing it are telling you where it's coming from and what you're giving them and, and what it actually is. Right. It's, it's, it's really just sort of one aspect of what makes a high quality product, right? It's, oh, yeah. it's one aspect of that, right? Just like certifications are one aspect of that. Taste I think is, is one aspect of that. Um, transparency in the sourcing process for us is part of how we back up the rationale and the claim that we produce a really high quality product. I have a really hard time sometimes talking about price because it's probably the thing that we get the most pushback on. And it's a, it's a challenge for me to talk about and sort of have a deep conversation around sometimes because I have a really difficult time kind of wrapping my head around that mentality and that you're going to pay two, three, four, five times as much for your personal trainer because you think they're the best option available. You think they're going to get you the best results. You're going to pay twice as much for your class. You're going to pay 10 times as much for the gym equipment because you want, you know, Iron Grip or Soren X instead of some other crappy brand, right? 
you're willing to pay it. You're again, you're willing to accept basically that you get what you pay for in all of these categories where the difference between a, a crappy product and a great product can be hundreds or thousands of dollars. But you're not you're not going to pay three dollars instead of two dollars to recover after your workout. That's the difference. Three dollars instead of two dollars. Or specifically two fifty instead of like one seventy five. Right. But it's There's, you would I, I can't wrap my head around that. Right? Yeah. Well and, and I guess that my question would be we're talking about putting a price tag on performance. And we're talking about putting a price tag on what you provide for the people that you work with. And I don't know if you're going to invest in those specific areas, I don't think investing in people based on a monetary set is the best way to look at any situation. Does that make I sense? Think, I, I think I get what you're saying, right? And that the sort of, you, you shouldn't be, not to say that you shouldn't be price sensitive, right? But certainly that price shouldn't be your only criteria. Right, and on top of that, like, when you're investing in people, when you're investing in things to make people better, I understand there's budgets and restraints and this, that, and the other thing, but being able to provide them with the best possible means to support them in the area that you feel need to be supported, like, I feel like that last box to check should be the easiest one to figure out how to check. You're trying to help people. You're not trying... I mean, yeah, those people will affect the bottom line, but you're not trying to balance a checkbook. You're trying to balance people. Yeah, I think that's right. I think that's fair in that I think the products that you provide, again, regardless of whether it's in this category or not, are a reflection of the service you're providing, right? They're a reflection and, and sort of therefore a reflection of yourself. A hundred percent. Because if you're not willing to find the best thing possible and find the way to provide the best thing possible for these people that you're asking to give the best possible to you, then what exactly are you doing? Yeah, you know, I think I think it's okay if not everybody is necessarily willing to pay a premium or or even able to pay a premium, right? Then you have that conversation. But I think you should you shouldn't start at the bottom end and then go up right? You should start with, hey, this is clearly the best option for you, right? Just like this is the best program for you to train with. But if you can only train two days a week, just like if you can only afford to pay X dollars instead of, you know, 2X, then we're going to work around that, right? And we're, we're going to figure out a way to make this work for you. But you shouldn't start at the bottom end. I couldn't agree more with that. Finding the best solution to the problem and f making sure that that option is readily known and then allowing the people that have to make the decision to make the decision is a thousand percent how I could see all of these decisions being made to the best possible realm in, in any situation. Yeah, you know, I, I think you probably have dealt with that a lot of times, right? That you want to see somebody training five days a week, but they've only got the time to do three. You want to see them doing 80-minute sessions. They've only got the time for 45. I'm, I'm pulling these numbers out of the air. I don't know what the specific recommendation would be, but I'm, I'm sure you've dealt with those situations, right, where it's, hey, we're going to start with the ideal. Here's where we'd like you to be, but... If we need to, if we need to build up to that, then that's what we'll do. Right. You know, maybe there are some boxes that need to get checked first, but eventually the goal should always be to provide whatever is the best in the area that you are trying to provide for people. 
Yeah, well, I mean, like, it's, uh, even even like go back to a, an example of supplementation, right? If you wanted to see your client or your athlete taking whey protein, creatine, vitamin D, fish oil, and a multivitamin, that's maybe your ideal circumstance, right? You don't necessarily have to start there. Maybe they don't want to start with that many pills. Maybe they can't start with that many pills. Maybe they don't. They haven't been convinced that they need to yet. So you'd prioritize, right? You'd you'd start you'd start somewhere lower and say, okay, well, um, we're not going to do the we're not going to do the multivitamin right away. We're just going to do uh, we're just going to do vitamin D and magnesium, or we're just going to supplement around where you know we've been able to test for deficiencies. And we'll work from there. And then find whatever the biggest solution is to fix and build off that. <laughs> you know, actually, the, when, when I started working with Dave, like we actually went through that process specifically of, hey, here's all the here's all the products he'd like to see me using based on my blood work and based on my goals. But I was also like 14 and I was really bad at swallowing pills. Like seriously, I was like really bad at it, so I couldn't take them all. So we st we started with like less than a third of it, right? We started with just the bare bones basics, and we did as many of them in, in powdered form as possible, as opposed to encapsulation form. We 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 sort of just made it work and, and went from there. I mean, now I'm a pro, right? Now I can get like four down in one swallow, but at the same time, I've had a lot of experience now perhaps more than I care to admit. But yeah, but I mean, it, like all of this stuff though, you got to start at the bottom and work your way up. Yeah. Just like, just like, I guess the way we're, we're approaching our product line, right? Like I said, the issue of, Hey, not all of these products are the same. You need to stop treating supplements like commodities a lot of these products are dangerous. That mindset and that issue is not unique to protein powder. And we don't intend only to make protein powder, right? But we had to start somewhere. We had to start somewhere. So we obviously intend to expand the product line. We intend to attack different areas. We intend to attack other areas that we see as, you know, perpetrators, as areas that need differentiation, that need innovation. But couldn't start everywhere. No, because as soon as you start to serve two masters, you're, you know, you're, you're going to run out of gas. And you're never going to get one of them right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I use this, uh, I use this line a lot when we're looking at like sponsorship opportunities of the like with the marketing team and that, uh, you know, focus means being able to say no to good ideas. And that you can't do everything at once to do, try and do everything at once inherently means that you're going to do some of those things less well than you should have or. Could. So if you're able, if you think you can do 10 things, great, you should try and do eight. You shouldn't try and do 12, right? Because you'd much rather err on the side of, of having more time to do those eight things phenomenally than running the risk of letting any of those 12 things slip. You should put that quote on a t-shirt, first of all. <laughs> Which one? The focus means being able to say no to good things. It's a good idea. Yeah, well, look, there's a lot of good ideas out there. Yeah. I think I yeah. heard that quote somewhere. I don't remember where, but... Honestly, I've just been like lectured on these things for so long that sometimes they just come out of me and I'm like, yeah, that, that actually makes pretty good sense. Like we should follow that. Yeah. So then, Matt, let me get you out of here on this then since you started running down that rabbit hole. Yeah. <clears throat> Speaking of focus, what's next for you guys? I mean, you've got some really kick butt stuff now. You guys are, are starting to build some headway and... What's the next step for Momentus? Where do you see you guys going and where does this 
impact the entire performance nutrition industry? So I can give you the short version, I can give you the long version. The long version is sort of the step-by-step -step of, well, you know, we're going to build out a mental performance stack next, and we're going to be bringing out products for anti-inflammatory, for joint health, for, uh, like I said, brain health. We're going to be bringing out a collagen later this year, these types of things. And then the short version is that, like I've, like I've said in other contexts before, you know, the goal for this business in the long run the, the mission, if you will, the vision, the long term, what does a win look like for us? A win here is to kill bad supplements. And that, like I said before, there are a lot of low quality products on this market that are downright dangerous. And in my not so humble opinion, do not deserve to be here. They don't deserve to be here. They don't deserve to own so many, so much of people's wallets. And they don't deserve to stick around with a product that's just crap. I love it, man. I really so do. It's, it's it's that I wanna I wanna I wanna I wanna get rid of those. I don't need to own hundred percent of this market to have a successful business. In fact, I don't even need to own half of it. It's huge. I just need to own enough of it that the companies producing crap products are faced with two options change their formulas or lose the business. Either option is a win for you and me. Yes, because the less options that are gonna tarnish with all the work these kids that we get to work with do uh, is a win because nothing's worse than having them A, waste their money and B, put something down the hatch that's gonna not do what they're intending to do. Exactly. I think that's exactly right. Like I said, I don't need to own 100% of the market. I don't think that's a realistic expectation. But if if we get enough traction that that products like Optimum or Muscle Farm or any of these other companies are like, hey, we're going to start to lose significant business unless we create safer, higher quality products. That's a big win. That's a big win. Even if they're not making a product as high quality as ours, if they're just making one that's safe, that won't make you sick that won't upset your stomach, that doesn't have lead in it. That, that's a big improvement. That's a big improvement, and I think that's genuinely going to impact athletes' lives. Yeah, man, I love it. Well, listen, Matt, keep up the good fight, brother. I love what you guys are putting out. You know, it's uh, it's something that I'm really happy that we're able to, to utilize and, and have for the kids that we get to work with because it is exceptional, and it, it does go down easy, and it's – the quality is the quality, man. You know, like if you're going to spend money on a steak, you better make sure you, you spend money on your shake too, right? So appreciate all you're doing, brother, and uh, keep up the good work. No, thank you, man. I really appreciate you having me on. Really appreciate you being a supporter, and it, it, it means the world. Like I said, we can, we can go on for days about athlete sponsorship or celebrity investors and the like, but the fact of the matter is we're trying to serve – the customer that's like you we're trying to serve a customer and we're trying to make products for the customer that knows their shit that's how we're going to win here right is serving the people that really know what they're talking about and making a product for those individuals there's a lot of celebrities out there there's a lot of you know instagram influencers that's not really what we're about well i appreciate that man and keep up the great work and we'll be in touch real soon brother thank you Thanks so much, Jay. Have a good one. You too. And a huge thanks to Momentus's Matt Wan for spending the time with us today. Guys, I mean, what can you say? A man out there trying to help coaches by producing a better product to help fuel our athletes better. Um, and Matt and his company are doing really sensational work. And we're truly grateful, Matt, for everything that you guys are doing. So keep up the work, brother. We, uh, we appreciate it. And as always, guys, if you did enjoy the talk, please share it through the social media outlet of your choice. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it may be. As always, we are just trying to get the best information out there to all the great coaches that we can. And as always, guys, thank you for everything that you do for us here at Central Virginia Sport Performance. We will be back next week with another awesome guest. We will see you then.